I'm Dana Denha, and you're watching FYI. Ann Arbor is reaching sustainability goals, and to keep the momentum going, the Green Fair, June 1 through 6, is the time to try local cuisines and see how these 12 area merchants are creating an environmentally friendly approach to business. Visit a2gov.org slash Green Fair for all the details, and watch the ways we eliminated our carbon footprint in 2018 at this green event. 18 years ago, then Mayor John Heefsha created a venue for green living and sustainability to be celebrated annually in the downtown. It's an initiative to get people out and get an understanding and an appreciation for what people can do for the environment and what's happening in our community. The Green Fair boasts numerous organizations teaching the ways to maintain a brighter tomorrow. We're interested in the stewardship of the Great Lakes and we're also interested in services such as marine transportation so you see those freighters when you're out in the Great Lakes well what how do they know when they can go out how do they know when conditions are safe how do they know when there's going to be ice the city's had a program of planting a lot of new trees and those trees should be pruned every two to three years so the citizen pruners are working on the ground using hand lopers pole trimmers small hand trimmers and saws and we take care of the small trees in town. Composting with the city of Ann Arbor is different than most other cities in that you can compost your table scraps, including meat and bones. And it's also to talk about circular economy, which is the idea of not throwing things away, viewing waste as a resource. Stay tuned and we'll be back with more in exactly 30 seconds. Ann Arbor is looking for help to make the city more inclusive for all. Your voice can be that of change on the Equitable Engagement Steering Committee. Learn how next. An inclusive and welcoming community is important to me. Those left out in the past deserve to be heard on decisions for our city. Meaningful engagement is key to Ann Arbor's success. The City of Ann Arbor invites community members to apply to serve on the Equitable Engagement Steering Committee. We're assembling a diverse group of leaders for change. These leaders will shepherd Ann Arbor beyond its history with racism and prejudices. Are you one of these leaders? Ann Arbor can move forward. You belong in the city you call home. Equity, Equity is, is important, important to me. me. Together, we can create an equitable Ann Arbor. Apply by Monday, June 7th, 2021 to join the Ann Arbor Equitable Engagement Steering Committee. To apply or for details, call 734-794-6430, extension 42590, or go online to a2gov.org forward slash A2 Equitable Engagement. Apply today to make history and change Ann Arbor's future for the better. There's no better way to celebrate America's independence than watching bright lights bursting in the air. Before you put your own fireworks display on, there's some pertinent safety information. Learn more about firework safety and laws in this month's City Roundup in 60. <laughs> Hi there, Mike Kennedy, Fire Chief, Ann Arbor Fire Department, here to talk about firework safety for the upcoming holiday. Fireworks in the city of Ann Arbor can only be 
shot off on July 3rd, 4th, and 5th between 8 a.m. and midnight on those three days. Fireworks are not allowed to be displayed on city parks, on city right-of-way, or city streets. And you have to have permission from any property owner that you're gonna set them off at. You are responsible for any damage or fires that's caused by fireworks. And we always recommend that the safest fireworks are those that you go and see by a professional display at a safe distance. The July 4th holiday is the number one day of the year for ER visits, and a lot of that is attributable to fireworks. So we hope everyone has a happy and safe July 4th holiday. If you're going to see fireworks, please go to a professional display. Thank you. Maintaining a healthy relationship with food will strengthen body and mind. And our city's open air market offers the freshest of fruits and vegetables while also creating a relationship with the grower. And what better person to sustain Ann Arbor's farmer's market than a farmer themselves? Joining me is Stephanie Stouffer, market manager for the Ann Arbor Farmer's Market. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Hi, thanks for having me. You know, I'd like to know more about you. Tell me what, you know, about your background and what led you to the Ann Arbor's Farmer's Market. Yeah, so it's a long story, but I'll try to give a quick summary. Um, I did my graduate school research about local food movements in Michigan and California, and through the confluence of events of doing that research, um, I just started, you know, doing observation in my field of sociology at farmers markets. I got more and more involved, and then that led me to trying to grow my own food. And then starting my own um, farm business as well that brought me first to the Ypsilanti Farmer's Market, um, where I've been a vendor for about 11 years. Um, and then, you know, right in the middle of the pandemic, I found my way somehow uh, to the Ann Arbor Farmer's Market. Uh, and I am here now. So, you know, it's a lot of different hats I've been wearing in the local food movement and local food scene here for about the last 12 years. Um, but here I am now. You know, I'm just going to assume something about you that you're a very hard worker. I mean, if you're running your own farm, you're running the, you know, the farmer's market, you're over here, you're over there, you know, you're, I feel like you're someone that's got to keep busy all the time based on what you're telling me. I guess that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't, don't really have that much downtime or if I do, it's, you know, filled with more just, you know, food, not a, during the pandemic, but I actually love going to farmer's markets when I'm traveling um, when I'm traveling, obviously not right now, um, but it's something that I, I really do enjoy. And then I also should say, I do teach sociology part-time, not during the high season of farmer's market, not during the summer, um, but at Washtenaw Community College as well. So yes, I'm even busier. Than it yeah, I mean, you are like, I mean, you're like one of those people I know that are like, okay, I got my six jobs I got to go do, yeah. <laughs> you know? Pretty much. But that's yeah. awesome. And I think like your relationship, this deep rooted relationship that you've created with food has really um, put you in the perfect position here at the Ann Arbor Farmers Market. Talk about, I'd like to know a little bit about your farm first. Tell us about what you grow and the name of your farm and, you know, how that helped you because I feel like these last couple farmers, managers of the market have been farmers. And I think there's a benefit to that. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been helpful for sure. I mean, knowing what it feels like to be a vendor can be really helpful in terms of approaching problem solving, but then also having to know, you know, the regulations, like what it means to be certified organic or how you do cottage food production or value added production beyond that. Um, that has all been super helpful. So my farm is called Nightshade Farm, and I specialize in heirloom tomatoes and peppers. Although, you know, I do all sorts of heirloom vegetables, um, fully diversified, but those are my two main foci with those crops. And part of the reason for that is early on, back when I started this farm in 2010, um, I was also producing salsa and hot sauce as part of it. But, you know, as you said, I'm very busy, got a little bit too much going on. So unfortunately, had to put that aside for now. Um, I still obviously produce for friends and family, but not for sale at the moment. Um, and for my farm, I focus more on the fresh produce, as well as I do make value added, value added items like paprika, garlic powder with my crops. Oh. Um, so that's sort of how I fell into it that way. Um, but I do think that that has been very helpful coming into this role, as my predecessor Stephanie Willette did, um, coming from the farm side of the table, uh, as opposed to just the pure management side of it. Do you find that, you know, having, being a farmer yourself and like, you know, having a relationship with farmers, 
helps because I know that it can be challenging to, at times to run the market because, you know, there's people that are, you know, have been there a long time. They have certain expectations. You want to bring new talent in as well. So I'm sure it is, there's a lot of juggling and, and making appeasing people. Yes. It's a delicate dance. <laughs> I'd like to say, uh, and part of it has been an extra challenge because of the pandemic, right? We've had to change some of the policies that have happened in the past. Um, and I know for people that have been here a long time, it is hard. Um, to change, you know, you've been doing something not just for years, but for decades, uh, a certain way, and then we come in and change it. So that has been a challenge, but for the most part, vendors have been really receptive and very helpful in, you know, helping me not have as steep of a learning curve, have, have it helping me to learn as quick as possible to adapt um, to this situation. But you're right, there's always different personalities in a market of the size of ours. You know, we have about 120 vendors in our full roster. Uh, obviously, they're not there all at the same time, um, but right now we have about an average of 75 vendors per Saturday market um, and about, I want to say, like maybe half of that on a Wednesday. Um, and of course, that ebbs and flows as the season does, but you're right, there's a lot of uh, that coordinating. And I think, you know, partly my experience um, as a farmer, I was also the program manager of Tillian Farm Development Center, which was an incubator farm for beginning farmers that actually some of the vendors got their start at. So I, you know, have a lot of experience managing farmers in other settings, which was helpful. And I think also my educational background um, is helpful because it gives me a, a level of patience that yeah. people may not have um, when conflicts arise, or not even when conflicts arise, just in general, um, to try to be as you know, inclusive and as welcoming as possible in interactions with anyone, vendor or customer. Yeah, I know, you know, it's something unrelated to the farmer's market, but I guess it, it's part of your job too, that I've noticed is that really during the pandemic, I don't know, watching media and stuff like that, that like the biggest problem that people have with conflict is that they don't listen to people. So like everyone's biggest problem is their, their ears aren't open. And I, it's crazy to me because my job is listening to people. So I listen when people talk, but it's, it really is a common problem. And it's a skill set to listen to people and have patience. Sure. and hear them out. So yeah, I, I completely understand where you're coming from in that facet of it. Yes. Definitely. Talk about, you know, you've been on the job for about a year now. What, what was it like that first year? How was it like stepping into those shoes? And then, you know, how is it, how has it changed? Yeah, well, you know, these days it seems like we're getting step closer and closer back to normalcy, whatever that means, whatever that's going to look like. Um, but in the very beginning, it was sort of very, very cautious. We weren't sure if people were going to be receptive. You know, back then it was so people were very conscious about, you know, being outside, even with masks. People were just very unsure of the course the virus was going to take. And, you know, those early days was, were really hard. And, and luckily for me, um, we had a really great team at the Parks Department here at the City of Ann Arbor where there was all sorts of other people that were brought on for the first couple of weeks to make sure things ran smoothly in this format, you know, and also it helped that some other park sites were closed. So we were able to sort of absorb temporarily um, staff from those places. And that was, you know, incredibly helpful to make sure, you know, we had people understanding that we were one way now in certain areas, or we had extra staff to help with the curbside pickup that we added, or, you know, just to sort of direct people and make people feel Safe. So that was something in the beginning. I was very fortunate. It wasn't just like, here you go, figure it out. You know, a lot of that was already decided. And um, during my interview process, I actually had a role somewhat in deciding. I had to give a presentation about like, how would you reopen safely and what things would you do? And, um, and a lot of that involved you know, researching the Michigan Farmers Market Association, and their recommendations, um, you know, talking to the city and other parks facilities and seeing how they were doing it. So so luckily we had a ton of support. I had a ton of support coming on. Um, but you know, the one thing that was constant throughout is people were very thankful that we were open, that they could be here, that they could support our farmers, that they could support our vendors, that they could support local business, um, that they could get healthy food without going inside of a grocery store. And the pandemic in general, I think has made people realize the importance of the farmer, because even if you were comfortable going inside of a grocery store at the beginning of all this, there wasn't great produce at the grocery store because of the pandemic and more and more people I 
that I know were joining CSAs because of it, because that was a way to get really good, fresh, delicious produce. And you didn't have to go in the store and you were just getting it from the farmer and you knew it was going to be good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there was just so many disruptions of the supply chain early on. I think not only was people realizing, oh, I want to support these people because I want them to keep going. It's more like you were saying, like, I can't get fresh produce anywhere else. Um, and it hit us sort of like at the beginning of our season, like Michigan asparagus and strawberries got sort of disrupted us not being open in the beginning. Um, but so then we, when we were open, I've had vendors tell me that last year throughout, like that's some of the best sales they've ever had because people were just that supportive and that excited uh, about being able to shop outside and support local farmers and vendors as well. I mean, I'll tell you a little bit, a tidbit about myself. My dad is like the middleman. He goes to Eastern Market and stuff like that. And he delivers to grocery stores. And he's been doing that for many, many years, a couple of decades. But now when I talk to him, he's basically telling me that that job is going to be obsolete at some point. That the way he sees it, it's, it is, it's more people going straight to the farmer. They don't want that middleman so much anymore. And they don't want to get their produce from the grocery store like they traditionally mm -hmm. did. Do That's interesting. See, I know. Yeah. Do you see those buying habits? Do you see that change? Um, not necessarily, because I think that you know some of the more local are actually almost pivoting to being that middleman role. Uh, like yeah. for example, Argus Farm Stop now they're doing sort of a produce box, which is an aggregation of all of their um, sites. So I don't know if that's necessarily going away, but maybe who's doing that work is changing. Yeah. Um, you know, because some farmers have become a collective, so you could order online, or the Ypsilanti Farmers Market, for example, they have a whole really extensive online marketplace for the same thing. You can just order, and you get there, and you pick up a box that all of your vendor orders have been put into one place. Mm -hmm. um, so I see that happening a lot. Uh, there certainly has been increased interest in CSA, for sure. Um, and you know, that that's not just produce. That's like any type of CSA. Yeah. Um, I know, for example, Tantra farm, one of the vendors here, they've partnered with a lot of other food businesses. Um, and they have sort of their, their special immune booster box has been going on and been really popular, um, during the course of the pandemic. So definitely seeing changes, but I would say that pivot is more a little bit that I'm seeing at least to, um, sort of online ordering or alternative forms of aggregation. But I think that aggregating is still for sure happening, at least in the short term. Yeah, that's why I wanted to ask you about it. Cause I, I feel like- Maybe you should tell him now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell him that. No, I mean, so he, fast. Yeah. He's ready to retire, so he's okay. okay he's like, good. you know, my business can go away. I'm fine with that. But yeah, it's just something that he sort of brought to my attention. And, you know, he's sort of my go-to guy too. So I'm like, uh, you know, my daughter loves watermelon, but watermelon doesn't taste great this year. And he's sure. like, it's because of the Texas, it's because of the snow in Texas, you know, like he'll, he'll give me little tidbits, but it's also great to know someone knowledgeable like that, like you, your farmer, because I don't know when I go to the grocery store, what's in season and what's not. So I don't want to buy stuff that's out of season because it doesn't really taste that good when it's out of season. Sure. So it, it, like having that relationship is really beneficial Yes. all around for everybody yeah I totally agree and I feel like you know a lot of times you'll learn a recipe that you weren't sure about or a way to prepare something where you're like maybe not even want to buy something because you don't know what to do with it or but I feel like yeah the farmer's market still is that really special place where it's a very community driven experience you can have that personal relationship um and yeah you can still do that online but obviously it's not as personal um, so I think even with all the pivoting and the changing to alternative deliveries, I think people still really were yearning for a market experience, um, partly for that community, but partly because it's a safe thing, you know, to do outside, um, socially distant during the pandemic. So I think a lot of different positive things were, were pointing us in this direction of success over the last year. You did mention briefly that you do curbside pickup. Is that something that was started during the pandemic? And do you foresee it continuing after? Yeah, that's something that we started during the pandemic. Um, unlike markets like Ipsy, where I explained they do the logistics, we don't have the capacity to do that, partly because we are a really large market, but we also don't have any cold storage. We don't have a place to pack boxes. Um, so the way that ours works is that customers order directly with the vendors, um, and they can find all that information on our website, which is a2gov.org slash market. Um, but yeah, so they go directly to our, our vendor directory, uh, pick something from a farmer, do the payment with them, 
And then we are the ones bringing the order, you know, whether it's to our curbside parking area or if people come to our market office window on foot, um, we can also help them with that. And we are planning on continuing that um, for as long as we can. And part of the reason is that it helps us be ADA compliant for folks that can't medically tolerate masks as well. So that's really important to us to be accessible to everybody, um, even during this peculiar time we find ourselves in. I did have a chance to peruse your MLive article and, you know, you have some plans for the future. You want to have a more diverse market. You want to have the younger farmers. Can you talk about this idea and, and how it can be possible, how we can make it happen? Sure. And I think, you know, we have some amazing veteran vendors, some families that have been with us forever and we love them and they're core of our market. Um, but I've talked to some of them and they're like, look, you know, we're getting towards a time to retire. Um, and we're thinking about it, we might not have a next generation in line. Um, and they really want to see the market continue to be vibrant and make sure that there's a secure foundation. Um, so that's part of it, making sure we have younger vendors coming up, people that might just be started out, people that are just looking for additional markets to add on that are established. Um, so we're not necessarily looking for brand new people. Like we still obviously have um, some really quality Oh, yeah. here, I mean, you, know, you want to celebrate the people you have too. And this is that idea exactly. of bringing new people sure. in and maintaining yes. your, your client base that you already have. Exactly. So that's a big part of it is just making sure that we continue the success that some of our veteran vendors have built up for us. Um, because again, we'd be nowhere without our fabulous vendors. Um, and then the other side is, you know, diversity, because a lot of times people have told me or I've seen, you know, looking around the market, um, the diversity of the vendors at market don't necessarily match our community here in Ann Arbor, here in Washtenaw County. Um, so, you know, it, it's obviously a challenge um, because when we're trying to recruit vendors, we're up against a lot of other equity issues like access to land, for example. We know in Washtenaw County is very much not affordable for most people um, and unfortunately becoming less so uh, as time goes on. Um, so that's that's part of it. Um, but also just making sure that we are a more inclusive space for everyone. And when I say diversity, you know, I don't mean just racial ethnic diversity. I mean, like across the board, I mean, age, I mean, gender presentation, you know, language, you name it. Um, we're looking for people that sort of match our community. Um, and we've been doing a little bit of recruitment. Um, the other thing that's a little hard with this right now is we are constrained by our need for physical distancing. So we can't you know, take on any more applications right now because we just really don't have space to fit people. And partly that's because we want to make sure our current vendors have enough space. Um, they're able to be, you know, having a thriving business here. Um, so I will say that we currently are on pause at the moment for taking new vendors on. Um, but in the fall, we hope to reopen again. And that is sort of my long-term goal of trying to recruit more um, vendors. The other thing I would say is that being in Carytown, right? We are a historically black neighborhood of, of Ann Arbor. And a lot of people don't necessarily know that history or they don't know how recent. And the fact that that is still the case in some parts, some neighborhoods just to our West. Um, you know, I actually just met someone today at Market who grew up in the neighborhood and talked about like how it has changed so much um, and how, you know, there are some black families still hanging on, but you know, the, the property taxes are becoming prohibitive to a lot of people. And I would also say too, for me coming from the Ypsilanti farmer's market where I've been a vendor for a really long time, you know, it's a much smaller market, but there's more diversity of vendors, even in a smaller market, you know? And I think that's partly because of the Ann Arbor market being such a draw and being, you know, such a large market that it means that to be here, you have to have a really high volume for, mm -hmm. for growers. So it isn't necessarily suited for people that are just starting out or people who have smaller acreage exactly. Um, so that, that's part of it. Um, but the other part is, I think, um, I don't know if there's been a concerted effort in the past to think about recruitment in this way, um, you know, in the past. And again, I could be completely wrong because I was not, not here. Um, yeah. but for my understanding, you know, a lot of it would just be evaluating product. You know, is this the correct product for us? Is this something that people want? Is this something we don't have enough of? Or is this something we have too much of? Um, and they weren't necessarily thinking about, you know, who is owning these businesses, you know, who is being represented uh, in our market? Because again, I think it's really important if we're in a community, if we are a community space, um, to look like our community. And, and we're trying to do our best to get 
closer to that goal, although, although of course it is a very long-term goal. Yeah. So that answers. Yeah, it does. Um, Lots before, of could be said. before we go, why don't you tell people, you know, why they should continue or start taking advantage of our local farmers markets? Yeah, well, we're a fantastic resource. And us at the Ann Arbor market, we're a little bit different than other local markets because we are producer only, meaning that people that are farmers, people that are producers, it's all grown and made by them. Um, and it is all in the state of Michigan, with the exception of a couple coming in from Ohio. But it's fantastic. It's a way to get some nutrient dense food, fresh food. And oftentimes, you know, there's an assumption that farmers markets are expensive, but you can find some very good deals here that do make it. Um, pretty affordable. In addition, we take uh, multiple forms of food assistance. Food stamps can be used at the market. There's a double up food bucks program that matches dollar for dollar um, food stamps purchases. Um, we have other food assistance programs like WIC and Senior Fresh as well um, as we get into the high season of the summer. So it is a really great place to not just support local, but also get some of the highest quality food and products that we have to offer in the city. And I will say, if you go to the farmer's market and you buy fresh produce from there, you can taste the difference. You really can. Certainly. Well, thank you for coming on the show, Stephanie. Thanks so much for having me. For more on this and other programs, visit hugov.org slash ctn. Visit youtube.com slash ctn Ann Arbor to see all that we have to offer. And remember to like, subscribe, and ring that notification. Thanks for watching and tune in next time to FYI. Mm -hmm.